Hi again, San Mateo County Dental Society. We've got a great lecture lined up this coming April for the GM meeting, and the doctor has been kind enough to allow me to interview him last week after hours at his office. He is a specialist, a periodontist located in San Francisco, Dr. Artavan Fateh. We wanted to give you a chance to actually hear a little bit more about his lecture that he'll be giving. Thank you, Dr. Fateh, for joining us today. Thanks for having Can you tell us a little bit more about what you plan to discuss on April 19th? Um, I'll be mainly talking about gingival recession, uh, its uh, etiology, uh, diagnosis, indications for treatment, and uh, we'll be talking also about uh, different treatment modalities that we have with main emphasis on new techniques. And uh, towards the end, we briefly touch about relatively new technique we call lip repositioning that we have been doing at the office for the last uh, six, seven years. We'll talk about indications for that, uh, which is basically, in, um, in some cases, uh, an alternative technique for orthognotic surgeries. With periodontics, there's a lot of subcategories or topics to discuss. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you wanted to talk more about gingival recession? Sure. Out of uh, so many different issues that we, uh, we see with periodontium happening, or I think gingival recession is one of the most overlooked ones. For some reason, we, uh, we tend to not diagnose gingival recession areas because lots of patients come into our offices without any symptoms without any pain in those areas and majority of the time we diagnose uh, areas with recession when patients have lots of sensitivity or they come in with some some uh, some kind of cosmetic concerns in those areas also i think over the years we have been so uh, focused on uh, probing and measuring the pocket depth as the main indicator for the periodontal disease and that that has caused us to forget that also gingival thickness and the height of gingiva are also uh, part of periodontium and in fact uh, health and their presence is essential for the long-term health of the periodontium. Can you tell us a little bit more about attached gingiva, keratinized tissue and its relationship and importance with gingival recession? Sure. Uh, generally speaking, um, and we'll, we'll cover all that at, uh, at the lecture, we we'll go into details, but generally speaking we'd like to see some, some attached tissue uh, in terms of um, uh, a couple of millimeters around the neck of the teeth. Uh, and also there has been a recent paradigm shift from thinking width and height being important to thickness being super important now and with all the new advances and, and surgical techniques and material what we're trying to gain uh, nowadays is more thickness than the height or width of the keratinous tissue. Are you able to accurately predict the amount of coverage that you can get from gingival grafts? Yes, you can predict, uh, but how successful we are and um, delivering what we have predicted, that's a different story, as you know. Um, there are classifications based on which somewhat predict the amount of uh, coverage we can get, and uh, we're going to go over all those at the lecture. And I think it's important for our dentist colleagues to, to know about that, which are very, very um, uh, easy to understand. So when they do their consult, they can tell the patient what to expect. Uh, from the surgery and how much coverage uh, we can get. Having said that, there are also cases that we know that we cannot get lots of coverage, but we do this procedure or the procedures that I'll touch on uh, the lecture to gain thickness more than uh, coverage. So there's a lot of treatment modalities out there today. I get all these flyers in the mail all the time telling me that I need to take their course so I can learn the best and the newest techniques. One of them is pinhole technique. I'm sure you know of other techniques. How how well can you speak of these uh, different options that are out there? Sure, I'll tell you something interesting. For the last five, six years, whenever we meet with uh, with, with the dentist, uh, the first question or second we get asked is about pinhole surgical technique. Uh, that technique was developed uh, a little over 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, in, in Southern California by Dr. Chow, a very smart dentist. Um, it involves making uh, small holes using 16 gauge needle. We'll talk about all the details, I don't sure. want to bore you with that. But uh, like I said, in selective cases, I think it's, it, it works pretty well. What do we use? We use uh, a modified version of a traditional tunneling technique, uh, which also um, involves making some small holes, but we insert the graft and I'll have um, some, some pictures to show at the, at the lecture.
Awesome. So I was fortunate enough to first meet Artie about two years ago in our study club uh, for Spear. And actually, before we begin, um, I know that we both wanted to give a shout out to all the people in our study group. Hey guys. All right. So going back to uh, the two years that we've known each other through the study club, I know that you've presented a lot of cases to us. You've shown us some incredible photos of lip repositioning and those are some great cases. And I know that you'll probably talk a little bit more uh, at the 19th meeting. Can you tell us a little bit about it now and uh, what's involved? Sure. Um, I mean, I won't get into details. Uh, it's not a new technique. It was developed uh, 25 years ago by an oral surgeon in France. Uh, but for some reason, people didn't do a lot of those up until recently. It's a very successful technique uh, in selective cases. And it's it, it's very rewarding if you if you actually select a good case. Uh, the surgery itself takes only about an hour from start to finish. It's basically uh, good for people with a uh, super thin upper lip, um, people with gummy smile, uh, excessive gingival display, and uh, uh, you basically, what, what you basically gain is you bring the lip down and you end up having a thicker, fuller lip, which patients uh, love a lot. On the, like I said, I'll show you some, some uh, pictures that you're going to really like. It's nice to get a perspective from the periodontist. I know that we refer, or many of us refer to the periodontist. It's, it's nice to be able to get some uh, knowledge from a, a true periodontist, a great periodontist. And thank you. Thank you, Artie, and we look forward to seeing you on the 19th. Likewise, thank you very much. All right.